Well, good morning and welcome to our first uh, live Zoom uh, worship experience. We're so glad you're all uh, here today. Uh, following worship, we will be having uh, a coffee hour and everyone will be unmuted. So uh, you'll be able to chat with each other following worship today. Uh, please let other people know that this is being recorded and will be uh, posted on our website, uh, on YouTube and uh, other social media outlets. Uh, it's uh, good to see you all. And uh, we, we hope this uh, goes off well. We've had several practice runs and uh, just are so glad to have everyone together uh, this morning. So let the bells call us together in the worship of our God. Whenever we gather, we do so in the name of the triune God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. pray. Eternal God, we come to you with hungry hearts, waiting to be filled, waiting to be filled with a sense of your presence, 
waiting to be filled with the touch of your spirit, waiting to be filled with new energy for service. Come to us, we pray. Be with us. Touch us. Empower us as your people that we might worship you here and act in the world with great hope. For Jesus' sake, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, chapter 8, verses 24 and 25. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is not seen is not hope. Let me say that again. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what one already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. If you lose hope, somehow you lose the vitality that keeps life moving. You lose that courage to be, that quality that helps you go on in spite of it all. And so today, I still have a dream. Even in the inevitable moments when all seems hopeless, we know that we hope. And without hope, we cannot truly live. And in agonizing desperation, we cry for the bread of hope. In the midst of our outer dangers, I have felt an inner calm and known resources of strength that only God could give. In many instances, I have felt the power of God transforming the fatigue of despair into the buoyancy of hope. We must accept the finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. The time is always right to do the right thing. All these words of wisdom and hope are from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. For Dr. King knew that our hope is based not only on the character of God, but also on the promises of God. God's promise to always be with us. God's promises, which are to radically transform the future. God promises to reconcile fully with all humanity and to restore to whole creation that struggles under the weight of human brokenness. God promises that death shall be no more, that the peaceable kingdom shall reign on earth, and that every tear shall be wiped from every eye. God promises life in its fullness, Though we must not choose to respond to God's grace, God promises life in its fullness. Though we must choose to respond to God's grace, to open ourselves to accept and embody the gift of hope that directs us to the flourishing of God's creation, which includes all of humanity. These are the promises that shed light on all the contemporary concerns for otherness, for differences, and cultural consciousness. That God embraces and encourages uniqueness and diversity is revealed to us through the complexity and variety that exist in nature, and yes, even in the human species. Scripture speaks of such radical relationships the lion shall lie down with the lamb. The child shall play on top of the poisonous snake's den. And the image of God walking in the garden beside us in the cool of the evening. In these images is our hope. These images direct us to live our lives, to create a world where these are the norms Imagine a world without 
nuclear weapons, a world without AIDS and COVID-19, a world without racial and economic divisions, a world where the once rich and the once poor are not seen like that, but live side by side and share all things in common and every day share meals under a shade tree, swapping family stories. For the time is always right to do the right thing. God doesn't promise just a better world, but instead, as Elaine Robinson writes, God promises to pull together the loose threads of our existence, to weave a magnificent tapestry out of the many different patterns, shapes, colors, and textures that sometimes seem to be so confusing and difficult to negotiate. God's promises give us hope that the future will bring to fulfillment a radical relationship in the midst of spectacular diversity. Hope is simply trusting the promises of God. Hope is trusting that God truly is making that magnificent tapestry out of the things that now divide us. And this trust, this hope in the promise of God brings a mission to us. In this hope, we are to engage the present in light of the future, to recognize the signs of the new creation and to work for justice and reconciliation. As Paul writes, we are ambassadors for Christ, reconciling the world to God. Our mission is to speak the words and the message of Christ and to create a ministry of reconciliation. When I was still in seminary, these words stuck with me I knew that these words defined me and these words have defined my ministry all of these years. That we are ambassadors for Christ, reconciling the world to God. Ambassadors speak and do just as Christ. For this is our hope. And we are free to be for the other because we are ambassadors for Christ. Rather than being free from the others, hope makes us free to be in relationship with those who are so different from us. Free to be part of the transformation, not only of ourselves, but transformation of the world as God always intended it to be. That is who we are. That is who we are called to be. We are not yet there. But I see hope being lived out in the conversations I'm now hearing about a new future for society. I see hope being lived out in the peaceful demonstrations in the streets across this country and around the world. I see hope being lived out because so many of those involved in demonstration and conversation are the age of my grandchildren. They want and are willing to work for the kingdom of God to come and to come soon. When people ask, when will Jesus come again? I respond, Jesus comes when we take care of the lonely, when we fight for those who do not have a voice, when we stand up for those who no longer can stand on their own. Jesus comes every time we work for justice and righteousness and spend our energy to live out now the reign of Christ in its fullness, even if it isn't fully here yet. So live as if it is. That is living in hope. Over these 15 years that we have shared ministry, this is what I have tried to live and to preach and to encourage the congregation to do. When I arrived, you were already doing so many wonderful ministries. And I witnessed that whenever food for Kinder Cottage surrounds our communion table, 
It's a vision of the kingdom. In the early years of our ministry together, we became a global mission church as a witness to others. And then you started the backpack ministry for our community. You became involved in and sponsored and worked a site for the Twigs feeding ministry in Cahokia every summer. You received the Hoylton Mission Partner Award. You began the conversation about becoming a more welcoming community. You began to catch the vision of God's hope in the world, and I have seen you begin to live that out. For the time is always right to do the right thing. We are not yet there, but we have come a long way. Having the conversation on the hard things is a start, but it's only the start. During these 15 years, a lot of seeds have been planted. Some watering occurred, and we have waited for God to provide the growth. There are more seeds to be planted, and there is more watering to be done so God can provide the growth. And I look forward to the day when I hear that you have become a just peace church, when you have become a wise ministry church, that is a church with ministry for mental health concerns, and when you become an open and affirming church. And I will rejoice with you when those days come. It may be from a distance, but I will rejoice with you. For those days will be your witness that your hope is truly based on the promises of God and that alone. So continue what you are doing, but always live in hope. Take the next steps and God will guide you to live out that promise each day as the people of God known as St. Paul. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for being with your people and offering them great hope through your promises. We thank you for those who pass the word of your hope to each new generation. We thank you for martyrs and saints who give themselves in love for you and in the pursuit of peace and justice on earth. We thank you that we count as our brothers and sisters in Christ, people of all races, tongues, and nations. We thank you for those who witness faithfully to you in the midst of political or economic oppression, for those who believe in and work for God's future in great hope. We pray for the family of Richard Williams, whose graveside service was held yesterday and for his surviving wife, Linda, for children and grandchildren. We pray for your healing spirit to fall upon Dorothy and Bob Rye, Betty Eckert, Violet Nast, Carlisle Wilde, Jan Hoffman, Shirley Werenberg, Doris Bound, Chet Barker, Alta Crisco, those in prison and others who cannot socially distance in these times. Bless this congregation in their pursuit of following in your great hope for the world and in their quest to be a witness to the ways of the reign of Christ. May all your people be one in faith and hope and love, even as we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now the time in our worship service where we dedicate our gifts to the Lord. We give thanks for everyone who has sent in their offerings this last week, for those who contribute online, uh, and for all those who prayerfully lift up the ministry of this church during this time of separation. Uh, stay tuned for uh, emails and other forms of communication you may receive over the next week or two. Uh, next week, we will be having once again uh, Zoom worship at this time at 10 o'clock. Uh, it will also be the worship service uh, where we acknowledge the closing out of our, ministry, our shared ministry together. And so, uh, Others will be a part of the worship service through the Zoom uh, process, including our conference minister, uh, the Reverend Shanna Johnson, uh, and a person uh, from the Committee of, on Ministry of the Illinois South Conference. Uh, so please uh, spread the word uh, that uh, we'll be having worship at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, Please stay for Zoom coffee hour, which is right here. You don't have to go any place. We'll unmute everyone as soon as our service is over today, and you will be able uh, to talk with each other uh, during our Zoom coffee hour. I think next week, rumor has it uh, that there's going to be a parade or something like that at uh, 1130. Uh, uh, driving by the church. Uh, it's kind of odd for me to announce that uh, uh, since I, I guess that's uh, uh, something that's going to happen uh, for me and in recognition of the ministry that we shared together. Uh, so uh, uh, mark that on your calendar as well. And so it is that we close out our worship time together today. And truly, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring all of you peace. We'll now have uh, some more of Laurie's music as we transition to Zoom coffee hour. Thank you all. <laughs>